that's the water drop D6 water filtration system. I'm going to show you how to get it installed. And most importantly, I'm going to show you the water testing results from this DTS meter to establish the baseline. Uh, first of all, I'm going to open up a purified water from Kirkland. I had to cut it open because the meter won't fit in the little opening. Okay, PPM is 20 from a newly opened purified water. Now let's test the water coming out from the filter. And I would also collect the water from the drainage line and test the water quality as well. surge when it's turned off. One continuous shot. As you can see, the water quality is the same as tested from the uh, purified water I just opened. And it's even better. It's 19. Okay, again, no cutting, no editing at all. Let me put this one in the um, purified water. It's 20. And this water is also, okay, now it is 21. I guess it's con contaminated a little bit. Real. I did not expect this kind of results. And let's see the filtered water, the drainage, the wastewater. It is 227, 228. The higher the number, uh, the worse the water quality, yeah. Uh, let's test uh, the water coming from the tap. The tap water. The tap water is 129. Very interesting. Again, 22. Now it's contaminated. But still, I would totally drink this. This is tasty water. Well, based on the numbers, I think the water drop filtration system is a great way to produce high quality water at home. It is virtually the same, if not better, than the uh, bottled water I bought from Costco. When standing by, the power consumption is 0.3 watt. And the maximum power consumption is just below 80 watts. Two tubes connected in the back. The red one is the drainage. The white one is the intake, inlet. And the blue one goes into the facet. I disconnected the power supply and let me show you the core. The face plate is connected using two magnets. The filter core can be removed like this. It's quite heavy. It is rated for 1,000 gallons. The following video is my installation process. And that's everything included in the box. The facet and installation hardware. The main unit. Three tubes. Step one, I'm gonna install this T-shaped water intake and put it in the middle. Install the white inlet tube first, making the installation a bit easier in such a tight space. Hand tighten first, then use a wrench. Disconnect the cold water line. This is the tricky part. Note, this part is loose. So after we hand tighten, we got to make sure uh, to use a wrench to tighten it. 
because it also supports half inch water line connection. The T-shaped adapter is not really tightened out of the factory. If it is not half inch, the one above it should be also tightened. This is the main shutoff valve. I can now turn it on. And if I want to test the water intake, I can switch it on as well. But for now, I'll turn it off. So that valve is in the back. The main is on. The facet. Just plug it in like so. Got two washers, mounting washers. This is how it all come together, like this. These are the tubes. They're all color coded, so it's unlikely to get them wrong. Remove the plug, insert until it reaches that line. Then insert the locking clips. The blue one outlet also goes into the facet like this. And just like the other locking mechanism, we insert the tips, the locking clip. Now let's power it on for the first time. I have a power meter here so we can see the power consumption. The unit would beep for about five times and the system will start flushing. For uh, demo purposes, I clamped it onto my sink and secured the drain hose right here. It will start flushing every time the system is on and the power consumption is under 50 watts. That's the drain hose. Okay, let me, according to the user manual, I'm supposed to flush the system for about 20 minutes before using. When the system is on, the hose will also drain. That's the one to be connected under the sink. As for the drainage line, it is supposed to be connected right there. I should uh, potentially drill a hole in there, but uh, if water waste is a problem, then perhaps uh, the wastewater should be collected in the tank to be used later for the toilet flushing or for watering the lawns. And that's a more efficient use of water. And the whole thing can go down under the um, sink cabinet, so it's less visible. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this review helpful.